I'm very pleased to be joined by Alan Barnes from the RSPTA. Um, so just start, by what's your, your exact role in the organisation? Um, I'm an inspector. Okay. I've been an inspector with the RSPCA now for nearly 14 years. So I joined the RSPCA. Man and boy. <laughs> well, it seems yeah. like a long time. Yeah. It does. Um, although, that, although that 14 years has flown by because uh, we're so busy, basically. Um, and where is that? Is, it, is that sort of local to us here in Swindon? or? I, I frequent Swindon on a fairly frequent basis. I'm not the local officer. She right. couldn't unf- unfortunately be here today, um, so I've stepped in. Okay. And uh, I, I'm one Put of the, the short straw. I'm, I, I'm <laughs> one of yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm one of the Bristol inspectors. So there's uh, th- there's the Bristol group of inspectors, um, and there's about nine of us. There should be about thirteen of us. So we're 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 a few men down, and because of that, it means we work even harder and mm. have to travel greater distances to to respond to complaints of cruelty and neglect. And is that the, the, your, your mission, if you had to sum it up, the mission of the RSPCA inspector is to, what, to, to deal with sort of animal welfare issues of all kinds? Yeah, very yeah. much. Very much animal welfare issues of all kinds and of all animals. From, from a budgerigar to a from, horse or a... From yeah. a stick insect, yeah. um, mice, um, to gorillas, elephants, no matter, no matter yeah. what comes through or comes across, uh, you know, down the pe- um, through the computer system from the control room in Doncaster. Um, we've got these little handheld gadgets, uh, PDAs we call them, and a job, you, you know when a job c- comes through because it makes a little noise, so you, you look at it and you have to prioritise it. And that, those jobs are, are, are generally come from members of the public? Yeah. Is that yeah me- a member of the public will say, I've, I've seen a, you know, a horse stuck in a ditch or whatever? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the public are our eyes and ears. Mm. Um, we rely on the public not only to, um, to, to, to feed us information, um, and to c- generate jobs for us, but, but also to, to respond to requests when we're investigating um, incidents. You know, and I guess the, the public are also actually pay for it through, because I mean, it really it's funded by p- donations, isn't it? And yeah, fundraising and, um, uh, you know, a, a lot of it's from bequests, isn't it? Sort of, I suppose, typically the little old lady who, who leaves her fortune to the RSPCA. Yeah, the RSPCA is obviously a, a charity. Um, we're not affiliated or subsidised by the government in any mm. way, shape or form. Um, and I think, I think head office like to remain autonomous um, because obviously some of their policies um, aren't necessarily no. uh, you know, what, what the government would but like. But I guess what you do locally is probably quite different to, it's quite far removed from the head office down in Horsham, isn't it? So, very very uh, much so. Yeah. I mean, so tell me, what, what makes up the, what's your average working day like? What, what, do you, what kind of jobs? I suppose it's hard to generalise, isn't it? Do you know, it, one of the, the, the great things about my job, Joe, is that you never know what to expect. Mm. Like I said, when, you, when that, that PDA, the little gadget, makes a noise. It could and be you, anything. It could yeah. be absolutely anything. You never know what's around the corner in this job. And that is, as far as I'm concerned, that's one of the great it's things like being about a vet, is that We never know what's going to walk through those doors. You know, yeah. There's a lot of routine stuff, but then suddenly you get the, um, you know, the circus elephant that's been hit by a car in the yeah. car park, whatever. You, know, you yeah. just don't know, do you? The, RS, the work of an inspector and an animal welfare officer um, in the RSPC, it, it's very varied. Uh, but it's also quite seasonal. Um, right. Busier in the summer? Much busier, yeah. much busier in the summer. Yeah. We're absolutely run ragged in the summer. Uh, and obviously in the spring with the, 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 the newborn wildlife and, uh, and uh, abandoned newborn wildlife animals and, and, and the birds. And it must be difficult doing stuff that, you know, you know could be prevented. I guess the classic is the bird, new for newborn bird that's fallen out of a tree and then someone picks yeah. it up and takes it to you and you must sort of think look look yeah. they get the message through if they just left them where they were yeah. in those kind of situations yeah it's very difficult with with uh, wildlife to know what's the right thing to do um, and no matter how many years of experience you've got when you attend it's still very very difficult mm. i think the, the 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 control room up in doncaster but when you ring the rspca on the 0300 number and you get put through to doncaster um, the, the, the staff up in the office do their best to try and inform people at that point. Right. So hopefully those, those, those um, the, the, the fledglings yeah. that have fallen out less, that are still being fed by the, the mother bird or the parent bird, um, we, we will ask them to leave them well alone, you know. Um, but even then, you know, some people will, will persist yeah. that they need RSPCA yeah. involvement. And, and then it's up to us to, to attend, uh, whether it's cruelty, a, a complaint of cruelty, or, you know, like I've already said, a, a, a wild animal in distress. Yeah. And, w- and what about the other end of the spectrum, away from this kind of routine stuff? Have mm. you got any examples of the more, I suppose, exciting but unusual cases that you have to deal with? Cause yeah, well, I've, I've got lots of examples, and, 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 and every case is different. I think generally when, you, when, when a, a somebody joins 
and is successful in joining the RSPCA, they, they don't join to prosecute people. No. That's not what, I, I certainly didn't join the RSPCA to do that. And, and the RSPCA, the P stands for prevention. It doesn't stand mm. for prosecution. And, uh, and I think most of my colleagues look at it that way. Um, and, and although the British public are, are absolutely, they're the best in the world, mm. aren't they? At, at We've at got loving, that reputation, haven't we? At, yeah. at loving yeah. animals. Um, unfortunately, there is always going to be, I believe there's always going to be cruelty out there. And, uh, and sadly, from a personal point of view, I would say half a dozen times a year, I do have to report people to my head office uh, and, and a percentage, uh, quite a high percentage of those people will end up in court because they have neglected their animal or I been cruel to them. in today's economic climate, perhaps that's getting even worse because you know, people can't, um, look, you know, can't afford to look after pets, they don't know what to do with them, so it may not be yeah. intentional, it's just they're victims of circumstance. And are you yeah, seeing I a rise of problems related in that way? I think, I, mean, I, I can't quote any stats um, off the top of my head, Joe, but I think generally speaking, yeah, the, the, the last two or three years has been a very difficult mm. time, not just for the RSPCA, but for, for pet owners in general, mm. because they don't, they don't have the, um, the money to spend on their animals that they probably used to have. And would you, if someone is in those kind of circumstances where they're struggling to look after an animal, yeah. can they come and talk to the RSPCA or would they talk to their vets or a, another animal charity? I, as an inspector, would be only too happy if somebody had an animal in their care that they were responsible for and they suspected that something was wrong with it and they didn't know whether it needed to go to a vet or not, um, I would be happy as an inspector to pay them a visit. I would rather they mm. rang us in advance and asked for, asked for my opinion as opposed to leaving it and, um, and, and, uh, and obviously leaving mm. an animal to suffer. That's would a P of prevention again, isn't it? Very much yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, we, um, on the sort of subject of the more unusual cases, there's one in the, in the news at the moment, which is just amazing. And I, th I think we've got a picture here of this duck with a crossbow bolt through its neck. I mean, mm. it just makes you sick to think someone would have done that. Um, but it's amazing, isn't it? This duck is swimming around, Absolutely you know, amazing. apparently normally. Yeah. Um, and the, the problem the RSPCA have got is, is, I suppose, trying to catch that duck. Yeah. So, um, Ducks are notoriously difficult to catch. They can take off yeah. like helicopters. Um, I guess even with a crossbow bolt. Through yeah, it. I mean, if it, can, if it can fly, it's going to be very difficult to catch. And sadly, we find with wildlife that are sick or injured in some, in mm. some way, shape or form, um, if we can't catch them, it's, it's literally a matter of time until they go downhill. They may, may get yeah. an infection. Um, and because and, yeah, it's not and, and they it's can't, the, the duck can't you can't see the duck surviving with that in its neck long term. Can I you? wouldn't have thought so. I mean, yeah. you'd probably know better than that than me. But um, I, I've come across this sort of thing myself before, where animals have been shot. You mm. know, air rifle. Air yeah, yeah, we see that tour, all the time. You know, we yeah. see that a lot. Yeah. I think they get they tend those those animals that have been shot with an air rifle. They do tend to get infected more readily. Uh, uh, and then eventually we will be able to catch them. But that's sadly, we find that if we can catch them, it's often too late and the, and the, 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 the injury or the infection is that bad that there's not, often there's not a lot we can do. No, so, well, um, but, it, you know, don't end on a sort of no. sad note, but I mean, it, it is a fantastic service that you guys we carry try our out best, and, so. you know, without the RSPCA. I mean, I think if people are ever cynical about the RSPCA or, or you know, questioning giving money to them, mm. we need to think about what the world would be like without you guys. Well, it would be fairly unthinkable, wouldn't it? it, so. it, it it's kind words from you, and I thank, yeah. you, thank you for that. We try our best. We, we can't always work miracles. And no, as, as I've said, we are a charity, uh, and, and we are, as a charity, we're even limited. Mm. You know, some of the areas that we cover um, of an evening and, a, and at weekends are huge, and it may take us a couple of hours to, mm. to get somewhere, but exactly, we want. We would rather you, a member of the public, called us um, uh, 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 than they didn't. You know, yeah. it's, it's better safe than sorry. We will do our best to get somewhere if we, yeah. if we can. You know. Well, thank you ever so much for coming in today, Alan. It's been fascinating. Um, you know, and it's, it's it's wonderful to hear what great work you do and keep it up. Um, so that was that was Alan Barnes from the RSPCA.